My Gewannen, folks. Today we have this really cool infinite series involving the Riemann zeta function, and it's been quite a while since I evaluated one of these things. So we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity of zeta 2k times x to the 2k over k, and the absolute value of x here is less than 1. Okay, cool. So the first thing I'd like to do is expand the zeta function as an infinite series. So we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity of x to the 2k over k times the sum over n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 2k. Now this term here is independent of the index variable k, so we'll take it inside the summation operator. So we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity, sum over n from 1 to infinity of x to the 2k over k times 1 over n to the 2k. And we could rephrase this a bit as the sum over k from 1 to infinity and the sum over n of 1 over k times x over n to the 2k. Okay, cool. I'd now like to switch up the order of the summation operators and write this as the sum over n from 1 to infinity, sum over k from 1 to infinity of, wait, 1 over k times x squared over n squared to the k. That would work out much better. And now we can invoke another infinite series expansion, that for the logarithm, specifically log 1 minus z. This thing can be expanded as the negative of the sum over k from 1 to infinity of z to the k over k, provided that the absolute value of z is less than 1. And for z equal to x squared over n squared, we know that the absolute value of x is supposed to be less than 1, and n squared is a positive integer, so that means our sum s is now the sum over n from 1 to infinity, negative of that sum, that is, of the logarithm of 1 minus x squared over n squared. So we've gone from a sum involving the zeta function to a sum of logarithms, but how on earth are we supposed to evaluate this? Well, we have a beautiful tool at our disposal, and that is the factorization for the sine function. Link in the description box for sine x equal to x times the product over k from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over pi squared k squared. So what I'd like to do is replace x by pi times k. Uh, no, wait, pi times x. Yes, of course. So this implies that sine of pi x over pi x, where I'm just expanding this equation by 1 over x, x of course being non-zero, and the limit of this thing as x approaches zero is defined anyway. So we have sine of pi x over x equal to, terribly sorry about that, the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 minus pi squared x squared over pi squared k squared, so we have the pi squared terms canceling out, and we have sine of pi x over pi x equal to the product over k from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over k squared, which looks pretty damn familiar, but this is a sum of logarithms, and this is a infinite product. And that is, of course, no problem whatsoever, because taking logarithms, we have sine of pi x over pi x equal to the logarithm of this infinite product. And the log of a product is a sum, so we now have the sum over k, or I could change the index variable to n, why not? Sum over n from 1 to infinity of log 1 minus x squared over n squared, which is exactly what we needed, only with a negative sign. So this implies that s here is going to be, well, the negative would mean we have log of 1 over its argument. So that means we're left with log of pi x over sine of pi x. That does look like a cool result, but I'm not yet done. Why? Well, uh, it looks like a perfect excuse to invoke the gamma function. We know that pi over sine of pi x equals gamma x 
times gamma 1 minus x. This is Euler's beautiful reflection formula. So if I expand this whole thing by x, what I get is pi x over sine of pi x equal to x times gamma x, which by the recursion formula, we know that this thing equals gamma 1 plus x, and of course we have gamma 1 minus x as well. So this implies that the sum over k from 1 to infinity of the zeta function at 2k times x to the 2k over k equals the logarithm of gamma 1 plus x times gamma 1 minus x, which I find pretty damn cool. A nice value of this thing would be, let's see, if we evaluated at x, x equal to 1 half, or as a matter of fact, negative 1 half as well because of the symmetries involved. So in that case, we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity of zeta 2k times 1 half to the 2k in both cases. So that's k times 2 to the 2k, which is log gamma 3 halves times gamma 1 half. And gamma 1 half is famously equal to root pi. And by the recursion formula, terribly sorry about that, terribly sorry about that once again. Why am I struggling writing 1 over 2? Much better. And by the recursion formula, we know that gamma 3 halves is 1 half of gamma 1 half. So that should be root pi over 2. So we have this really nice infinite series result that the sum over k of zeta 2k over 2 to the 2k times k or 4k, if you like, equals log of pi over 2. That's quite nice. However, we're not done yet with this infinite series because this thing can be treated as a function of x. That is, of course, we have the sum over k of zeta 2k times x to the 2k over k. So what were to happen if we would differentiate this thing with respect to x? So in that case, we have s prime of x equal to the sum over k from 1 to infinity of zeta 2k times 2k times x to the 2k minus 1 over k. Some lovely cancellation taking place. And we have twice the sum over k from 1 to infinity of zeta 2k times x to the 2k minus 1. Again, the absolute value of x is supposed to be less than 1. But wait a minute, we know exactly what the sum converges to. We know that the series converges to log gamma 1 plus x times gamma 1 minus x. And using log properties, this is log gamma 1 plus x plus log gamma 1 minus x. So this implies that s prime of x is in fact gamma prime of 1 plus x over gamma 1 plus x plus gamma prime of, terribly sorry about that, 1 minus x over gamma 1 minus x. And because of the chain rule, we have an extra negative sign. And we know that gamma prime of s over gamma s, that is the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function is in fact the di gamma function. So we have di gamma of s implying that we have another really cool infinite series result. That is the sum over k from 1 to infinity of zeta 2k times x to the 2k minus 1. This whole thing sorts out to di gamma 1 plus x minus di gamma 1 minus x, which looks absolutely gorgeous indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.